literally as I'm recording this right now, I've got the Nationals game on in the NLDS. It's game four, Washington Nationals against the Chicago Cubs. Uh, the Nationals, they don't really have good success history in the playoffs. I know they've been in the Washington, D.C. area about, what, 10 or 12 years, something around that nature. And I'm just so used to it at this point. And I'm used to them choking in the playoffs every year. And you know what? If you want to call me a bandwagon fan for my whole thing with the Nationals is I've seen all the records they've broken in the, in the regular season. I know all these great stats they put up. They put all, all these the wins and all that other stuff in the NL East. And they're always these these favorites to go to the World Series and possibly win the World Series. They've got Steven Strasburg and Bryce Harper. Now they've got Daniel Murphy as well. But I've seen this every year. They kind of remind me of the Minnesota Vikings where at, they have all this talent. And then when it come, push comes to shove, they usually just fold away. And, and in the Nationals case, they usually choke with, as the Minnesota Vikings case, usually something just bizarre happens to where you're not surprised anymore. So literally got this game on as I'm recording right now. Uh, so we'll just have to see how they do. Thank God that the Dallas Mavericks was able to pull one out, a, a championship out, out of their butts because – Compared to the Vikings, where they, they usually just fall apart, and the Nationals, the Mavericks, they were that same team, too, where they go against the Spurs in the uh, Western Conference Finals, or in the case of 06, when they went against the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals, just everything fell apart. So thankfully, at least one of my teams got a championship, and uh, I'll talk about that a little later as far as why I'm a fan of each team. And if you've been following this podcast, you know why um, I'm a fan of each team. If you're loyal to the soil, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm a little bit different in my uh my takes as far as being a sports fan so uh this segment doing what segment this week on the minnesota vikings sam bradford now i know this is looking a little bit too far ahead this may not depending on how you look at it you may say this is you know you're looking too a little bit too far ahead randy what are you talking about we still have a regular season to go as uh one of my followers on facebook mentioned i am very concerned about sam bradford and those that have been following me, those that have been listening to the podcast for a while now know that I've been a big supporter of Sam Bradford up to this point. Mike Zimmer and Sam Bradford, I've been big supporters of, although Mike Zimmer, he's had issues with clock management and his coaching career so far with the Minnesota Vikings and Sam Bradford. I know everyone likes to get on. See, the thing is with Sam Bradford, I've noticed with the Vikings fan base, the people that don't like Sam Bradford is usually one of two reasons. One, like my brother-in-law, who's an Eagles fan, he calls him Check Down Sammy. And I know a lot of Vikings fans call him that, Check Down Sammy, because especially last year, when you need a play, especially on third down, all he would do is just do a, a check down pass and just not seem to give a damn to try to get the ball uh, past the first down marker. So that's the reason why, at least, I would say at least half the reason why uh, the Vikings fan that don't like Sam Bradford, that's half the reason why. And the other reason is probably because People are so infatuated and people are su such big supporters of Teddy Bridgewater that not so much that they don't like or they hate Sam Bradford, but they're just big supporters of Teddy Bridgewater that they're, they're like, all right, Sam, you know, okay, you're a good stopgap. I just want to see Teddy come back. So that's what I've noticed. But I've been a big supporter of Sam Bradford because, and I've supported Rick Spielman in making that move and giving up that first rounder last year in order to get him because you've got a team that you presumed was ready. We all thought they were ready, but the offensive line fell apart, and we all know how last season went down. But I'm very concerned with Sam Bradford now, and I'm sorry. I know this this may be looking too far ahead, and even you can consider this as far as looking at the regular season at hand right now. I'm concerned about Sam Bradford. I think that game against the Chicago Bears in which, yeah, we won 20-17. to 17. Sam Bradford did start that game, but he didn't. he looked like he was just not – comfortable out there every time he took a hit and he'd get up normally when he takes a hit and he gets up normally he's kind of like slowish kind of like grandpa style just oh my knees hurt but this game against the Chicago Bears was a little bit different his eyes his facial expression everything his demeanor just showed that he wanted no part of being out there I don't know if it's because Mike Zimmer was saying you know throwing hints and he's a known guy that he doesn't like guys that that are seemingly uh soft if you will and I'm not going to call Sam Bradford soft. I think we're just talking about a dude that's just, that's just had a run of bad luck. I think that's just really the case because I've been a big supporter of Sam Bradford. If you were to guarantee me the health of between Sam Bradford and Teddy Bridgewater, and you guarantee me that health would not be an issue, 
Who would I take? And the offensive line would be good for both quarterbacks. Who would I take? I take Sam Bradford every single day of the week because in the pocket, Sam Bradford can make all the throws. He can't escape out of the pocket like Teddy could, at least pre uh, pre knee injury. We'll have to see what he looks like coming back. But if you give me the option of Sam or Teddy, and they're both healthy, and 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 health is not an issue for either one of those two, I'm taking Sam Bradford every day of the week. He can make every throw in the pocket. He made throws that we had yet to see Teddy make before he got injured. So I would take Sam Bradford. But unfortunately, health is a concern with Sam Bradford. The question marks on Sam Bradford's health has been following him his entire career. His career is based off of his health questions. And if I'm not mistaken, coming from the uh, from uh, uh, Oklahoma University, University of Oklahoma, he had knee issues then, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that. But he's had health issues, health question marks his entire career. And then you get to last year. He made it throughout the entire season, 15 games. Uh, he, he missed the first week going against the Tennessee Titans. I believe we had Sean Hill as the quarterback then. But he made it through the rest of the 15 games of the season uh, with the worst offensive line in football. I've been saying that time and time again with no issues. Then you fast forward to uh, week one of this year where he had the best protection of his life. There was no sign. And I said this on uh, Vikings Vent Line on 1500 ESPN. There was no sign. There was nothing whatsoever that you saw in that game against the New Orleans Saints in week one where he said, oh, man, Sam Bradford, he might be dinged up a little bit. He might be a little bit hurt. None of that. He had the best protection of his life. He had a fantastic game. And before you could even enjoy it as a Vikings fan, he's hurt. A non-contact injury, just aggravated knee. I, I don't even know if they've officially given it a designation as far as what's going on. But now you're talking about a non-contact injury on the same knee that he's had multiple surgical repairs on. So I'm sorry. My whole thing is, yes, he made it through all of last season, and that's great, and that's all well and good. But this is a contract year for him. So I don't blame Mike Zimmer for starting Sam Bradford because this is a contract year for him. He's trying to show that he can play. If not for the Minnesota Vikings, he's auditioning for the other teams out there in the league that may need a quarterback. And we all know there are plenty of teams every single year, every team that's trying to get at least a decent quarterback. So I don't blame Sam Bradford for starting that game, but there's just no way with this lingering on a non-contact injury in the Saints game. And then he's missed what three and a half games since then three and a half games since then. And now we're talking about, Oh, week to week. We don't know. I just don't see if you're the Minnesota Vikings, how you can offer a multiple year contract to Sam Bradford. I think best case scenario for Sam, as far as with the Minnesota Vikings is you franchise tag him for a year. If Teddy's not going to, uh, if he's not up to speed, but so far, according to all the reports, he's doing very well in his rehab. Teddy Bridgewater is he's uh, moving along uh, very, a, a lot quicker than projected. And who knows? He's on the pup list now, but who knows if he'll play a little bit later on. I just don't see the point in dragging this out any further with Sam. If Sam Bradford can come back this year and be completely healthy, then great. Oh, all is well and good, but I'm sorry. I'm not going to believe that Sam Bradford is healthy. And usually when you say, oh, I'm not going to believe it until I, I see them out on the court or out in the field. After that game against the, uh, against the Chicago Bears, and by the way, Thank you, Minnesota Vikings, for finally winning in Soldier Field. I know the last decade and some change has been a little bit difficult out there, but you finally won in Soldier Field after a long time. But normally you say with a, with someone that's hobbling with injuries, you say, I'm not going to believe it as far as them being healthy until I see them playing, until they're right there, until they're definitely going to start. In the case of Sam Bradford, I'm not going to believe that Sam Bradford's healthy until not only he's out on the field, but he looks like he can at least plant his left leg down. That's what I want to see. There's just too many question marks. And people say, Teddy Bridgewater, oh, he's coming off a serious knee injury as well. And that's true. That's very, very true. The difference between the two is Teddy Bridgewater, we've seen him take hits before. And I'm like, the dude's frail, all right? But we've seen him take hits before. And we're like, oh, I don't know if he gets up. But he got up every single time. And this was a freak injury something that just never ever happens where a non-contact injury his knee blows up that's a whole different situation compared to Sam Bradford where every single year you're wondering if this dude's going to make it throughout the year Sam Bradford has a history of question marks on the health side of things and Teddy Bridgewater just had that one that one freak accident so and I think the upside is still there with Teddy Bridgewater I feel like he can still offer a lot let's see what he can do 
But as of right now, if you're if you're telling me to pick between the two, given the circumstances, I'm taking Teddy Bridgewater. I want to see what Teddy Bridgewater can do. And if he can't come back, and if Sam can't Sam can't come back either, then I don't know. I hear that Josh Rosen is good. I saw him play against Stanford a couple of weeks ago. He looks damn good. Takes the takes the ball out from under center, shotgun, doesn't matter. Just dissects and just uh, surgically just picks apart the defense. The dude's a beast. But I think in terms of Sam Bradford, I, and again, you're going to have to make this decision at some point at the end of the year. And I know we got a whole regular season to go, but I'm concerned that he's not even going to make it for the rest of this year. I, I personally believe, I personally believe where you're talking about a non-contact injury on the same knee that he's had multiple surgical repairs on. And the way he looked in Soldier Field on Monday night against the Bears, I don't think he's going to be back for the rest of the year. That's just my hunch. That's just, you know, outside looking in sort of a thing. But I'd be surprised if he comes back uh, uh, again this year and looks healthy. Maybe he comes back and he tries to take another stab at it. But I'd be shocked if he comes back and looks healthy again. And I know all the reports, especially in that Steelers game, If uh, I don't remember the, uh, the reporter that tweeted this out, but I mentioned this. Uh, when I went off on my rant talking about the Vikings should bring in Colin Kaepernick for at least a workout. And Case Keenum, he is making me eat my words. He's looked pretty good. He's looked pretty uh, pretty decent. The only game that he was just god-awful in, which is why I said we should bring in Kaepernick, was the Steelers game, in which he said that he was completely prepared for that game. Those were his words, not mine. But against Tampa Bay, and albeit they were decimated on defense, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were, he looked great against them. Against the Detroit Lions, he wasn't all that great, but I'm not going to necessarily blame him for that loss. You're talking about calling a wildcat play to start the second half. Jerk McKinnon dropped passes. Uh, every just A lot of just uh, uh, undisciplined football that I'm not going to put on uh, Case Keenum. But come back, bounce back against uh, the, the Chicago Bears. And you know what? I get it. The Bears stink. They got Mitch Trubisky out there. Okay, we'll see how he does for his career. But you know what? With Sam Bradford and Teddy Bridgewater, we couldn't win in Soldier Field. And damn it, Case Keenum did it, albeit uh, uh, basically uh, uh, halfway through the uh, the first half. Not halfway through the first half. That'd be the start of the second quarter. Halfway through the second quarter in which Case Keenum came out and he was good to go from there. I mean, the Vikings spotted him a 3-2 lead, I believe. So they, Sam Bradford didn't really do much uh, for Case Keenum. But he did what he had to do against the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field. So I give him credit for that. But I'm not going to rely on Case Keenum throughout this entire season. Now, I'm looking at the schedule here. They've got the Green Bay Packers, who, by the way, I'm, I'm going to just say it. I think they can win. I think they can beat the Green Bay Packers. It's going to be at U.S. Bank Stadium this Sunday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 noon Central Standard Time, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then after that, the, the, the games after that, you've, you're hosting – the Baltimore Ravens, who've just been god-awful on offense. The Cleveland Browns, is Kevin Hogan going to start? Deshaun Kaiser, that's an automatic win. The Washington Redskins, I th the reason why I feel a little bit comfortable, I think against the Rams, I think against the Rams, that's when we could have trouble. And the reason why I feel pretty confident against, at least this week, going against the Green Bay Packers, and then after that, the Baltimore Ravens, the Cleveland Browns, and the... Uh, and the, uh, the Washington Redskins, I say they should at least go 3-1, and one, worst case 2-2. Two and two. But the reason why I feel so good about this, and quite frankly, any game that we play is because the defense. The defense is has been playing absolutely fantastic. Everson Griffin, you know what, he'll get you an offsides a game, but damn it, he takes care of the left tackle, the opposing left tackle every single game. Absolutely destroys him. He is absolutely kicking ass out there. You got Daniel Hunter out there. Linval Joseph can uh, plug in the gaps, and then he can do good rushing the quarterback if he breaks free as well. The second-level defense, Anthony Barr, he's great. Aaron, Eric Hendricks, he can drop back in the, in the pass coverage. He's a good run stopper as well. And Xavier Rhodes and Harrison Smith is manning down the defensive back, uh, the defensive back group of the Minnesota Vikings. Xavier Rhodes is a shutdown corner. I fully expect against the Green Bay Packers because, quite honestly, until you go against – I would say the Detroit Lions, and maybe you can throw the Rams in there as well. Uh, after this, uh, this Green Bay Packers game is the only game where Xavier Rhodes, in this stretch of runs that I'm talking about, where Xavier Rhodes is going to have a legit receiver, a top flight receiver, and I fully expect him to shut him down. That's Jordy Nelson of the Green Bay Packers. But then after that, the Cleveland Browns, they're a joke. The Washington Redskins, they were hoping to get, uh, what's his name, Terrell Pryor going. He's having an okay year, but compared to expectations, he's not really living up to it this year. 
And then you got the, the, the Los Angeles Rams where they got Sammy Watkins. But again, Xavier Rhodes makes wide receivers have their career worst days. So I think the, the Minnesota Vikings, I'm very optimistic about them. I know I said that they'll probably go 7-9 and nine or 9-7, nine and seven, somewhere in between that range. But I want to be wrong. I want this team to win. No one wants to, this team. I want this team to win just as much as any, uh, any Vikings fan out there. So I think they're good. I think they have a good shot of going 3-1 and one this next four-game stretch, including beating the Green Bay, Green Bay Packers now. Looks like week 16. <laughs> week 16 where we go to Lambeau Field. That's a whole different story. We'll just have to see. And another reason why I feel pretty good about this team so far. Now, again, Case Keenum, I I don't expect – if we're going to have to rely on Case Keenum to carry us through the season, I am concerned. He's looking good against the teams that he should look good against. Against other teams, we'll just have to see the Steelers game. Maybe that was just an anomaly because all of a sudden he got the notice that he had to start even though he said he was prepared for it. Maybe he just got the late nod and then that kind of just took his psyche out of things. But you know what? We'll just have to see. But if we're relying on Case Keenum, I'm not. I'm not going to necessarily buy into it. I think we will fall into that nine and seven, maybe eight and eight range. But if you're telling me that maybe T Teddy Bridgewater can come back, if I'm not mistaken, he's eligible to come back what week eleven, week eleven, something like that after the buy, and he'll get a couple of uh, practices in. So we'll just have to see. But the offensive line has been playing what well. they are night and deep, uh, night and day. The offensive line is compared to last year. The offensive line has been fantastic. They've been now Mike Remmers. I will say this: Mike Remmers. That was the one guy I was concerned about the most in, on the offensive line throughout the entire offseason. Pro Football Focus had him. You know, I don't. I don't have. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't have it in front of me. They had Mike Remmers basically being one of the the uh, uh, below below average uh, tackles in all of football. One of the worst tackles in football. And my thing is, okay, essentially he's the new Matt Khalil of of this year. But you know what? He gives one sack a game or he gives one big pressure a game. It seems like on average, based on what I'm seeing, maybe it's a little bit more than that. But you know what? Compared to Matt Khalil, where it seemed like every other drive, he'd give up a sack or, or a quarterback hurry or something like that. I'll take that. Riley Reef has been absolutely amazing. I was a little bit skittish on drafting Pat Elfline. I thought we could have done a little bit better at the time with uh what's his name dan feeney but pat elf line has been looking good man so this offensive line they're night and day as far as compared to last year they are doing an absolutely outstanding job i don't have one game i can't recount one game where they had a bad game and i know people say oh the steelers that was where they had the bad game but like i said time and time again i'm gonna stay consistent with this i don't blame the offensive line for the steelers game i thought they started off very very well I thought Case Keenum took too many uh, drop, uh, too many sets back, uh, steps back, taking like nine or ten step drops, uh, holding on to the ball for too long, and as the game wore on, and you knew basically we were going to lose. I think that's when they started falling apart. But I don't blame them for that. I don't have one game on here where they were like, "Oh my God, they were just terrible." Oh, that's the offensive line that I'm used to seeing. So I don't know. It the, now it just comes down to the quarterback. Can Sam Bradford come back healthy? I don't. I seriously doubt it. And I think best case for him, you franchise tag him for this year. But as far as will Sam Bradford be back, unless you franchise tag him, uh, outside of that, he's gone. I don't see him coming back as Minnesota Vikings. There's just too many injuries. You sign him to a multiple-year contract, all that's going to happen is you're going to keep going through, through this every single year. And you know what? Here's the thing. As far as we're saying, oh, Sam Bradford, maybe this can be the year where He's finally healthy. It seems like that's the question every single year for Sam Bradford. Maybe this is just who he is. Maybe this is a guy who, on average, he'll get you maybe 8 or 10 games a year, maybe 12 on a good year. Last year may have just been an anomaly. He made it through the whole season. But maybe this is just who he is. We've been saying this his whole career. Oh, maybe just like with Adrian Peterson. Oh, he can open up the play-action game, and then it just never happened for us. Now, grant, granted, we had guys like Christian Ponder there, finally with guys like Brett Favre it worked out for a year, but maybe this is just who Sam Bradford is. So moving forward, as far as weaknesses on the rest of this team, I don't see any, any other weakness but the quarterback spot. As far as if Case Keenum can play, he's making me eat my words. I was wrong as hell. He's looking very, very good as a backup quarterback. So I will gladly take some more leftover crow I have for a Case Keenum, but I'm a little bit concerned if Teddy Bridgewater can come back and maybe look halfway decent, I'll take it. The only other weakness I can think of 
is that Laquan Treadwell, I'd never want to see him on the field again. He is a bust, okay? Let's just call it what it is. He does not need to be on the field. My only my only other criticism is Laquan Treadwell doesn't need to be on the field, and Jerry, Jarius Wright should be on the field more often. I don't understand, especially with Dalvin Cook being out. And Jarek McKinnon is looking good. Like I said, everyone that was dissing Jarek McKinnon, I don't understand what that, that was about. I've always thought he was a good running back, but... Jerick McKinnon, if he, let's say he gets uh, banged up a couple of plays because he runs hard out there, then you're relying on just uh, Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. Kyle Rudolph, his time is up. The whole hype train behind him is gone. He's a serviceable tight end. I'll give you that. But he was uh, supposed to be a little bit more than that. So if it comes down to where you're just relying on Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen, I don't understand why we don't throw Jarius right out there. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed this, hey, do us a favor. Share this video, tell your friends, comment on it, uh, anything that you like discussed on the show. The NBA season will be back next week. I'm very excited about that. Uh, we do this once a week. Mediocre at Best Podcast. This is a Blue Vision Entertainment production. You can follow us on Twitter at Realistic underscore Randy. You can subscribe on YouTube or iTunes. We'll see you next week. There's just something in the world you cannot run from. Yeah, cause hurt people hurt people. Not hard to love people. So evil don't need you. I'm gone and won't see you. You wrong and I seen it. Nightmares, no dreaming. Blocked and deleted. I'm feeling just so defeated.